we have one device up and running. That would be Facebook. Welcome to Facebook, friends. We're waiting for uh, our YouTubers to get going. All right, there we go. Hello, my name is Dan. This is Daily Art Adventure, second one today. Daily Art Adventure number 877. Can you see that? Barely. And this is the water color, the water colors, the water, <laughs> the water colors on top of the pen and ink, or the water colors on top of the pen and ink. Let's get you guys situated so you're looking at my table instead of at my face. All right, there we go. We have YouTube chat all ready to go. And we have Facebook chat ready to go. All right. So uh, for those of you who missed my broadcast earlier today, this is um, watercolor pencil, three or four colors, four colors, three layers. I did it first in yellow, then in orange, then in mostly purple, a little bit of blue. That helped me get all of the uh, drawing done. Here, here's my reference. This is a gift for someone, a gift for a man who owns this business from his wife. And then, of course, I did pen and ink um, with uh, a fountain pen like this, that was dangerous to open it right on top of that drawing, wasn't it? All right, and so I'm finally ready to embark on on watercolor. I'm gonna start with a two inch brush. I'm actually gonna start just by spraying the whole thing to get, whoops, <laughs> I forgot to get my watercolor tray ready. No, no big deal. So here's my watercolor tray. I'm gonna put that right over there. And the first color, I'm gonna put some a little bit of color on, on this brush. And that's gonna be blue. I do I actually wish I wish I had a um I had a, 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 a four, three or four inch brush here instead of just a two, but too late now. I don't want to get up. Don't want to get up in the mid midstream here. So we'll just make do with this blue, with this not blue, with this. Uh, Three inch brush, two inch brush, I mean. Now, this is admittedly a crazy way to paint, but then again, any of you who paint in watercolor probably understand any way to paint in watercolor <laughs> is crazy. Well, that's not exactly true. No, let me restick that. There are there are many, many, many crazy ways to paint in watercolor. This is just one of them. I'm going to do a lot of painting with a Kleenex or tissue, as the politically correct name, I'm sure, is. Some of you who, if you perhaps you, you follow my oil painting, then you can actually see a little bit of correlation here, can't you, between the way I, the way I uh, paint 
in with oils in the way I'm painting here. In watercolor. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of blue down here at the bottom. What do you think, Lake? Good. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Crazy way to paint? Yeah. I surprised you, didn't I? Lake gasped when I first, when I first did my first stroke, didn't you? Exactly, she was saying, what are you doing? I could see it on her face. How did you do that? Is that kind of pretty? That's pretty. A little bit more blue. Not at my painting. Very good. That's, that's three-year-old Avi over there in the corner who's just finished it. another beautiful abstract masterpiece. Hello, Doug Strickland. Oh, my goodness. And Lynn Gully. Doug, Doug, Doug. All right, you guys. I hope he's still watching. Doug Strickland is watching on Facebook. So for many years, I like saying it this way, Doug was officially the best artist in North Carolina. <laughs> because he won first place, grand prize, best in show, whatever you want to call it so many years in a row at the state fair if that doesn't give you if that doesn't give you permission to say you're the best artist in North Carolina I don't know what does <laughs> Doug good to hear from you okay I'm gonna do a little bit of um, yellow right up here I'm going to add some orange to that. Whoa, I don't like that mark. Don't panic too much, though. As you can see, I'm, I'm not panicking too much about any of this. Not, not too much. I, I am assuming it's obvious by this point that at the moment, now this will change, of course, but at the moment, I'm, I'm aiming for an effect that is not, that is really not rare in watercolor at all. This um, abstract clouds of color, just a wash, let everything, let everything blossom into everything else. No boundaries, everything soft, soft, soft. That will that this will form the base of of my painting. Let, I, let me do tell you one thing though. There, um, because again, because I call this my watercolor sketch technique. Always trying to be careful. That I don't confuse people, that they that they not think that this is a traditional um, watercolor technique. Oops.
Way to go, Ben's art. Good for you, man. I'd love to know where you won. Doesn't matter. Congratulations in any case. Good for you. Can I Google you? Can I find you? Ben's art. Or will I find you just on Facebook? I don't mean just. I mean that in a diminutive sense. But in any case, I suppose I can find you. Either one. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit more refined, as you can see, in my lifting out. We lost our Facebook friends several minutes ago, by the way, because uh, my Mevo camera is malfunctioning quite badly. Okay, I'm going to restart my Mevo camera. Bear with me just a little bit, you YouTube people, while we try to go back and pick up our wandering Facebook friends. Part of the problem is I have a uh, one camera, that I'm using Mevo cameras in both cases here, on both, oh, oh, oh. Um, but um, but um, I have an earlier edition of the Mevo that is not quite as, um, what's the word? Anyway, not as good at connecting as, as the new one. I look forward to ordering a new uh, Amiibo camera as soon as I can afford it. All right, I just decided to do something different. I'll keep going. I'm going to keep trying to get my uh, my Facebook camera functioning. It's not my fault, so to speak. It's just uh, e totally equipment failure. Um, all right, sorry for the bad noise. I'm going to run a hair dryer to uh, dry this thoroughly. Oh, well. I thought I was going to do that. Sorry about the bad noise.
He's okay now. He's okay. Don't don't let mama be mama. She's right here. All right. Here's what I I wasn't planning to do this. This has just come to me in the last several minutes. We're almost we almost have uh, Facebook up and with us again. All right. As I said, I was I wasn't. I wasn't planning on this, but just comes to me suddenly. It's like, hey, that would be a good idea. I'm going to do some lifting out um, with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. I'm going to be moving this tape around and around and around. I lift out areas of the painting that I want to be uh, lightened. If you haven't seen this trick, then lucky for you, you're watching. Okay, do we have do we have Facebook? Um, Let me see if I have any sound. Ah, uh, my monitor says I have sound, but I don't hear any. Too bad. All right. Whoa. <laughs> That's um, is my. Oh, I've got real low volume. That's what's going on here. Let's see if it works now. All right. So this is a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Hang on. I know I'm broadcasting everywhere now, but I don't have a don't have a monitor now on. The, there we go on Facebook. All right. I'm going to dip this in some well fairly clean water. <laughs> I wish it was perfectly clean. But this will have to do. And even though it looks like a sponge, it, it actually does behave. You have to treat it. Whoa. You have to treat it. It's picking up ink. And I didn't. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> have you guys ever seen that guy, that man on, on YouTube that he, he literally does a fishing show, but um, he just messes up? in a thousand different ways unintentionally it's one of the funniest things on youtube well that's what i'm kind of like tonight i'm just having all kinds of crazy things happening all right so this may not work quite as well as i had hoped because i'm picking up more more ink than i wanted to this the mr clean magic eraser But maybe if I'm gentle, maybe it'll be okay. All right, and then I'm using paper towel just to dry it up. Let's see what that looks like. My thinking here is, first of all, because I call this, because I call this watercolor sketch technique, um, I give myself permission, I give myself freedom to uh, use opaque white, opaque colors at the end, mostly white. Um, nah. well, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm undecided. The verdict is still out as to whether this is going to be a good idea or not. Let me try 
Let me try something else now. Let me try just holding a uh, palette knife at, at one edge. I've never done this before. Never, um, never held a palette knife. As a, as a masking tool with the magic eraser. I'm always making up new stuff. I don't know about you. All right, this, face, this Facebook seems to be up and running just fine now. Let's see what, let's see how that went. Be a little bit careful ripping off that tape. <laughs> In other words, I don't want to rip off the tape. Hey, okay. Yeah, that's that's quite nice. All right, let, let's continue. <laughs> let's continue and see if if we like this technique. Now, uh, one thing I mentioned earlier when I was doing the pen and ink work, um, I give myself permission, in fact, more than that, I invite myself quite cordially <laughs> to um, reintroduce uh, pen and ink work after I've done some watercolor. In other words, this is not like uh, what most people would probably consider traditional approach. That is, you do all of your line work and then and then you do all your painting like sort of like the coloring book mindset lines first color second no 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 so this is this i do not i do not restrict myself to that um stricture or structure um i will be um i will be coming in here um and uh, doing more lines and even probably a little bit of cross hatching. Although again, even, even that remains, remains to be seen. I may or may not do cross hatching. Hey, this, this, this technique of using a combination of masking tape and the uh, palette knife is actually working quite nicely. As I said earlier, a minute ago, I've never never done this before. That's part of art, by the way. You're just always making up. You don't have to follow anybody else's rules. Just do something that works. Ah, this is fun. So this will, I'm, I'm trying to um, white out, lighten out, um, large areas that will keep me from having to use uh, an opaque opaque paint later in the process okay so these uh, let me let me see I guess I guess I'll do this again we're making this up as we go here gang. I heard about these amazing mystical, magical, um, Mr. Clean magic erasers, you know, some years ago, and then very excitedly bought them, and and was immediately disappointed. <laughs> uh, so I'll tell you, I'll pass on to you my disappointment, so you won't make the same mistake. It looks like a sponge, of course. And the way sponges work is you rub, and I expected the I expected the the watercolor paint to lift out, lift off the paper, um, as I rubbed, and was quite disappointed in the effect because it didn't it didn't lift off really nearly enough. All right, so it's real easy now that I once I figured it out, real easy to to, to describe. It is interesting that they call it a magic eraser. 
because in fact you have to handle it exactly like an eraser. An eraser doesn't erase if you just like set it on the on the paper, on the pencil, right? You have to rub it. And that's what this is. So it's a it is a, a rubbing action in conjunction with the um with the magic eraser that makes it work and it actually beads up it literally just like erasers it leaves little balls of the the uh, sponge behind as you rub that way you know you're doing it right and um the magic eraser will indeed can indeed now i don't know if it, somebody out there might know tell me if it does hello treadfall good to hear from you um, I don't know if it will completely remove, I doubt it, I doubt that it will completely remove a staining color, right, You're a stain color, um, but it, it will almost remove, if not completely, I, I would like somebody to tell me if it, if it will do that, but uh, it will indeed 100%, you, you, you can take a piece of watercolor paper essentially back to white if you work at it long enough with a magic eraser. Now, it will never, the, the watercolor paper, as you know, if you're a watercolorist, you know, it will never have the same virgin surface that it had before you painted on it. But it'll have a, you know, so you just have to work with it. You just have to, um, it has a workable, it's, it's still a workable surface, like, like this area in here, all of this stuff. Um, I'm going to I'm going to uh, go back into those areas with pen and ink, and with and by the way, the, the magic eraser absolutely will totally can totally remove um, all the black ink. It's, it's, again, so I, that, that's impressive to me. I, I don't know if that's impressive to you, but that's darn impressive to me. Um, Hang on a second, I'm just thinking. Yeah, into a little bit of sky edge right up here. Yeah, yeah, and then over here. Isn't that sweet? Just a little bit of the gable there, um, silhouetted against the sky. fresh masking tape here. By the way, um, I personally, I would not try this with uh, cheap beige uh, old-fashioned masking tape. Just myself, I wouldn't um, get some of this frog tape, it's called, or I don't know. I think maybe frog tape was the original that came out several years ago, and now there, there are several copycats, but what is this called? Oh, painters mate green doesn't matter but anyway um, masking tape has gone through quite the um, technical revolution in the last several years and uh, again I, w I wouldn't try it with uh, the old-fashioned beige tan cheap stuff frankly myself oh hang on a second I'm gonna <laughs> now we're getting technical actually Treating the tape like a bit of frisket film. Ah. There are two problems here. One is I don't have a brand new blade because just I've got plenty of them there in the drawer. I just didn't just didn't take the minute to to grab one. And 
Now, I'm, I'm sure that anybody who's watching, if you, who's done watercolor painting, traditional watercolor painting before, first of all, I hope you're going um, something like, golly, <laughs> that's leave it to beaver exp oh, oh, um, expression. <laughs> golly, Mrs. Cleaver. <laughs> um, this is clearly not traditional watercolor technique. Again, the, no real surprise there because, because watercolor is m more than any others. I remember reading when I was in junior high school uh, a book about how to do watercolor and the artist, the, the author of the book called watercolor painting a bag of tricks, bag of tricks medium. You can do all kinds of crazy things with it. And that was 50 years ago. <laughs> And I believe that's, I still believe that's a good description. So, first of all, if you're a watercolor painter, what I'm doing doesn't really sh shock you all that much because you can do all kinds of crazy things with watercolor. But, <laughs> but on the other hand, admit that, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> As I like to say, take that look off your face. This, <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I was going to do. That's what students like to do when I'm, when I'm doing a live demo. You know, the, the students like to act like they're smart or look like they're smart. I'm sorry, I'm sounding like I'm criticizing my students. I'm not really, I'm just having some fun. But they like to sit there and, and sort of like go, yes, that's exactly what I was going to do. <laughs> when, I, when I know it's not true. <laughs> this is not what you were going to do. This is not what I was going to do. I'm ma making this up. <laughs> I mean, I've done this technique before, but I didn't know I was going to do it on this particular painting. Anyway, so it's sometimes good to admit when when uh, when you're surprised and say, "Dang, that's crazy!" I was not. I would never think. I was. That's not what I was going to do. Is, is the best way to put it. And uh, thereby, by watching this, perhaps I've expanded your watercolor. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Never mind. <laughs> What's, what's a body of music that, that a, a musician knows how to play in particular? That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Repertoire. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Perhaps I've expanded your watercolor repertoire just a little bit. Whew. How much more of this? How much more? Um... Yeah, I better do these windows down here. Although, yeah, I sort of hate to, I hate to lose that color in there, but I, I think I need to, I don't want to uh, have to do that much opaque stuff. I don't, mind, I don't mind doing little bits here and there, but I don't want to do my, uh, a lot. So let me tell you where I'm going after this. After after I've done more of this magic, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser lifting out, um, I'll first of all make sure that the paper is thoroughly dry because it's possible. No, I was going to say it's possible. The very next thing I do will be uh, would be pen and ink, but I I don't think so. I think I'll do more watercolor before I. Uh, before I come back to pen and ink. Anyway, both that's just a guess. Ooh, no, that's an interesting effect, isn't it? That's that, that, um, see that, oh, maybe if I really scrubbed and got this completely white, maybe I could lift out that, that little bit of red blush smudge there. But, um, it, it, it doesn't bother me. I'll, I'll be able to work with that just fine. There is a downspout over here that I definitely want to have white.
And let's do another little glow behind the building over here. So probably all of my big crazy crazy washes on this on this job are finished uh, from now on um, my watercolor is going to be shall we say surgically precise from now on the watercolor and I'll have to be very 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 careful um, not to do not to do too much of that surgical precision quote unquote because of course I don't want the I do not want the whole thing turning into um, you know, a tight realistic uh, no danger of that don't worry anyway I don't want it, I don't want it even fighting with itself I don't want it, some of it looking like anyway I'm, I'm that, that it's too hard to explain I it will be this glorious, I hope, glorious, I'm sure, glorious combination, interplay of looseness and tightness. Right? It will be, I promise. I was going to say a little while ago, um, um, it's clear that my, that my number one objective in this painting is not replication is not uh, similitude accuracy realism um, I do have some of that I, again I, I often like to say that because many times people erroneous artists and non-artists both think that the reason some of us do impressionistic work is because we lack the skills to do realism that that suspicion chafes me a little bit <laughs> um, which it shouldn't I should be above that kind of thing I should be above all chafing I I recognize that but uh, if by any chance you want to see well can this guy do realistic watercolor then absolutely I invite you to again to, <laughs> to dannelsonart.com and um, You can look at uh, at the watercolor page, and you'll see most of it will be this this general technique again, what I call watercolor sketch. But there are several examples of uh, tight, accurate realism in my watercolor collection. Oh yeah, let's do let's do this sidewalk. So isn't that fun? Isn't this fun? Um, for those of you who missed perhaps the beginning of this project this afternoon, um, let me repeat just so you can understand where I've been. I started out by drawing with watercolor pencils, not colored pencils, watercolor pencils. All right, just make sure you caught that. Big difference, big difference. And I started out with very light colors, like I started out with yellow and then followed up with orange and then blue and purple. So I, I drew the, the, the house, the building here, uh, three times in watercolor pencil, yellow, orange, and purple or blue. I drew it three times and then drew it the last time um, in uh, pen and ink. And so when, when I sprayed then, when I, at the beginning of this broadcast tonight, when I sprayed the whole paper with pure water, you can go back and watch that if you missed it. It just, it lifted up. It, the, the watercolor pencil just mushroomed, mushroomed into bold color. And then I also took a two inch brush, this brush right here, and swathed bold strokes of watercolor on top of the mushrooming watercolor pencil underneath. So all the colors that you see 
on the painting right now are a combination. Most of the yellow comes from that initial yellow watercolor pencil. Most of the orange, likewise, comes from that. But I did put some red down and blue and so forth. Um, and one of the things perhaps a beginner might wonder, well, did you know what it was going to look like? Did you know, you know, what was going to happen when you did all that? And the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> well, it, it might be good for you to understand that. Did I know what it was going to look like? And the answer is no, 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 no. That's half the fun. <laughs> I'm not sure it's half, but okay, that's that's a great part of the fun, is that you 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 don't know what it's going to look like, but you know it's going to look good. See, that's and in order to paint this way, of course, you have to let go of that that drive that most early journey. So here's how I describe it, and I've, on my regular broadcasts on YouTube, I've I've said this a hundred times, perhaps. Um, for, I believe that the ideal art journey is this. You spend the first half of your art journey, hang on just a second, let me see if there's anything else I absolutely need to lighten up. You spend the first half of your art journey, yeah, there is. You spend the first half of your art journey learning how to paint stuff that looks like stuff. I'll let that sink in. Or in other words, you learn how to paint realism or realistically, either one, any of those words will do, okay? But then many people make a subtle but very important shift in their journey. Not everybody does, and that's all right. Um, but I certainly did. And, and again, most, I think it's fair to say most do, um, where we shift from the goal is not to paint stuff that looks like stuff. The, the goal is being kind of cute in my language. Uh, the goal is to paint stuff that looks like paint. In other words, where the, my number one objective now is all of the abstract elements of design. That's that's my number one concern. Um, so, no, I didn't know what it was going to look like, but I knew it was going to look good, and I know I knew that I could work with it. Whatever. All right, I'm done with the magic eraser. Done with the masking tape. Let's just for before I before I quit. Ah, treadfall is giving us a word. If the color is really, 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 if you keep scrubbing, yeah, it will destroy the surface completely. I'm not surprised. Uh, Shan, Shannon says, is it tearing up the paper at all? And I, I would say, um, n n no, not really. It is in the uh, hyper fussy watercolorist sense of the word. Um, if you're a hyper fussy, serious watercolorist, you understand that just by going like this, you've ruined the the surf the surface of the paper. Okay, so if you're in that realm, yes, I've ruined the surface. But no, for all practical purposes, um, the surface is still quite workable. Now, I'm going to be a little bit. See, I think it's I'm, I'm going to be a little bit premature, but I think I'm okay. Partly, this is in answer to your your question. Is it Shannon? Treadfall. You're exactly right. If you use it lightly, now, Treadfall. I mean, what I what you just saw me do. Um. I I wouldn't characterize that as lightly. I I think I'm I abused the the heck out of it pretty good. But it's it's just a matter of semantics, really, isn't it? What is lightly to one person, maybe heavily to heavy to the next. So I, I would I would characterize what I just did as calibrated, measured, uh, not not tender by any means. Um, and here's the proof. Part of the reason I, I went, decided to go ahead and do a little bit of uh, um, pen and ink. And again, it's this kind of pen. I wouldn't I would not at this point. I would not use. Uh, I would not recommend using a. Uh, fountain pen just too too blue, unpredictable but this this kind of pen is and this is waterproof is predictable um, now let me hasten to say it's a water-based ink so it's not waterproof when it first goes on the paper you understand um, 
it dries waterproof. But if there was going to be any blossoming or mushrooming because of the poor quality of the, the paper surface, um, you would be seeing that right now. So I'm, I'm partly doing this to answer um, Shannon's very good question. Is it, you know, is the surface of the paper destroyed, so to speak? And the answer is no, this, it seems to be taking this pen quite nicely. I don't see any feathering going on at all. Of course, I'm not looking through a microscope, so they may be different. So if you're a watercolor purist, yes, I've destroyed the heck out of this watercolor paper. But if you're just a regular, <laughs> a regular watercolor person who wants to create a beautiful painting, no, it's quite, quite functional. I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm going to put this down, though, and do what I said a little while ago, which is um, commence to use a good old, use a good old, uh, hang on, hang on, I'm thinking, to use a good old southern expression. I'm going to commence to doing some watercolor painting right now. But, hang on, because I'm trying to think. Um, obviously, I'm going to paint orange. Let me show you my reference again. I have this photograph um, of the building. That's This is the one that my client gave me. I also went on Google Earth and on Google period and on Google Maps. I met Google Maps and found several other images. I, I used uh, some of my Maps images to see the side of the building over here. As you can see, I've changed the angle of the building slightly and uh, Google certainly helped me in that regard. So any, you can imagine that I'm going to paint orange brick colored in here fairly carefully but before I do that, I think I want to paint, getting rid of all these great big brushes now. <laughs> well, I might use a one inch brush. I'll leave that here on my, at my elbow. Um, before I start doing um, orange, I think, so I'm talking myself into painting um, Now here's one little bit of practical advice that I, I am not following right now, and that is that I almost always like to have a piece of this paper, whatever it is that I'm working on, I like to have a scrap piece sitting right beside me. I do not have that, unfortunately, uh, because then, right now, I'm, I'm testing to see what color, but it works a lot better if you're actually working on the um, the exact kind of paper. Oh yeah, you know what? I can tell now, now that I'm painting on this surface, um, I can I can sense the, uh, the damage, if you will, the damage done. I'm not complaining. I'm still plenty happy with it. But I can, it, it is not behaving like uh, traditional watercolor paper. Does that make sense to you? And um, Again, I'm not complaining so much. I've, here, here, here's a this this applies to this applies to so much in the art world. Any any medium whatsoever, oil, acrylic, uh, pen and ink, um, charcoal, graphite. That and I'll put it this way: when you're a young person. <laughs> and you're trying really hard to to render draw paint something realistically very often things happen on the on the canvas or on the paper that irritate you it's like ah especially with watercolor do you remember i remember so well as a young person trying my darndest to do um believable, realistic watercolor, but the, um, the misbehavior <laughs> of the watercolor paint itself just drove me crazy. It just irritated the fire out of me that 
like for instance, that I couldn't put down a seamless uh, stroke. There would, there would be a seam between one stroke and the next, right? And if, if you're knocking yourself out, so to speak, trying to do realism, those kinds of incidents just drive you bazooic. Um, I think a huge part of coming to maturity as an artist is, and that might be putting it too strong, but I'm going to stick with it. A huge part of coming to maturity as an artist is not trying to um, diminish, obliterate, obliterate, that's the word, not trying to obliterate those accidents of the medium, but you learn to work with them. You learn to make, like in watercolor, the, the seams between strokes don't bother you anymore. Um, you make them work for you. And that's, in a sense, that's what I'm doing right now when I said um, the surface of this paper is not behaving uh, like the surface of a uh, piece of virgin watercolor paper. And that, that, of course, could be irritating if you, if you don't know it, and it's mostly just a mindset change. Mostly it's just like, oh, wait a minute, what? You mean I'm just supposed to work with it? Yes, you're just supposed to work with it. You make those accidents and incidents, if I may, accidents and incidents, you make them work for you. You don't fight against them. And I th now, as a young person, on the other hand, it was good for me to go through all the struggles of fighting against the, uh, the medium, if you will. But uh, having grown a little bit as an artist, I now find, oh wait, there's, there's something a whole lot better than fighting against the medium, and that is working with it. Stop fighting against it. Just, just let it be what it is, and, and don't fight it. And so that's what I'm doing right now when I say that the paper does not behave. And if you're watercolors, do you know what I mean? The paper is not behaving like uh, virgin watercolor paper. So it's in places it is, but it's it's behaving like um, watercolor paper that has had the heck beat out of it. <laughs> so if if I wanted it to behave like virgin paper, I would be very frustrated right now, right? But guess what? I don't have to experience that frustration at all. Um, because I just don't need to, uh, I don't need the, the paper. I'm looking for my box of Kleenex. Where did it go? Here it is. By the way, I'm one of those, I am one of those watercolorists who um, pretty much works with a brush in one hand and uh, and a tissue Kleenex in the other. Pretty much I have always been that way. And by the way, I just called myself a watercolorist and so are you going, what? You're not a watercolorist? Okay, right, right, right. No, I'm, uh, at least these, in the last 15 years, I've been almost exclusively a um, oil painter. Uh, but for the, th how many years? From 1970, uh, five until 2005. 30 years. For the th 30 years before that, I was uh, mostly a watercolorist. Watercolor and pen and ink. So anyway, what I find, this, this has been interesting, um, I, and many of you understand, I don't like this brush. Um, when I d describe the early first and second half of one's art journey, um, yes, I'm, I'm certainly being auto, autobiographical. I will admit that right, right up front. Um, I spent decades learning how to paint stuff that looked like stuff because in, in an essence, that was my job most of the time, unless I was doing cartoons, which I did a lot of that too. But it was my job to paint stuff that looked like stuff because I was an illustrator. Whoops, we lost our lost our Facebook friends again.
<laughs> Dreadfall, I love your comment. You're exactly correct. It, they drove us. They drove us crazy, didn't they? Because we were we were right where we were supposed to be. Honestly, learning, trying to paint stuff that looked like stuff. Right? Is that am I am I correct in my guess? Um. Okay, I was right in the middle of saying something. Oh, okay. So for here's the interesting thing. So for thirty years, off and on more on than off, I was a freelance illustrator. Um, and then in 2004, actually I started messing around with oil paintings in about 1999. But in 2004, I, I made a, a hard left or hard right, whichever you prefer. That was when I switched from first half of my art journey to second half. It was, I've told the story before, I won't repeat it here this time, but it was quite the dramatic turn on a dime. I mean, it was not a long, drawn-out thing. It was like light bulb went out and painted one day uh, as a new man with a with a new goal and vision. And again, that's a good story, but I don't want to tell it right now. Um, by the way, isn't that isn't that a sweet little subtle blue blush right there? Um, now, I keep interrupting myself. Well, I was telling a story about... Oh, yeah. So, um, I abandoned... My, essentially, I, I, I don't mean I abandoned, but I quit doing uh, tons and tons of watercolor and became an oil painter, but I was an oil painter in the second half of life. I was, a sec I was an oil painter who was no longer primarily focused on trying to paint stuff that looked like stuff. I had made the shift over to like, oh, so that's not the highest goal? No? What? So then I was, uh, so I've been painting for 15 years um, as an oil painter, more focused on um, the principles of abstract design, to, if you, to use a one, one term would work to describe that. And the irony is then when I go back, like I am now, when I go back to my watercolor life, see I still, when I left watercolor, when I left the watercolor world, the watercolor life, I was still in the first half of my art journey. I spent v virtually my whole, my whole um, watercolor career trying to paint stuff that looked like stuff. And then I switched over to oil and became second half of our journey, which is painting um, stuff that looks like paint. So it is a little bit funny then when I come back to watercolor because I tend to find myself not as sophisticated perhaps, not as far along um, uh, in the second half of the journey as I am in my oil painting because again most of my oil painting has been pursuing this this other elusive goal of painting stuff that looks like painting stuff that looks like paint in other words colors textures energy and so on and so on and so on and so forth but as you can see it it has it certainly has spilled over to some to some degree because this is not how I used to paint right this actually wouldn't be that bad a drive for you I don't think man we'd love to have you come and visit that would just be the ultimate okay while well, I'm so here let me again I'll describe my where I'm going to go from here I'm going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth uh, between painting, in other words, color and large marks, generally speaking, large marks, going back and forth between painting and pen and ink. I won't abandon either one completely. It'll be back and forth and back and forth. Does that make sense? And um, again, I will allow the image to emerge slowly 
out of the mess and out of the mist. You know what? That green is a little too stark, a little too, I don't know how, it, it felt like a, uh, a postage stamp stuck on the painting. That green was too, so there, I just smooshed the green out a little bit and it looks much better. And then um, I will finish the painting probably with a little bit, as little as I can get away with, but with a little bit of um, opaque medium, probably only white, but but I, I, I might cheat. You never know. I don't know. I don't know. For instance, I may mix up a little bit of... Uh, you know, opaque orange somewhere to, like, say, perhaps, I don't know, but if I wanted this area up here to appear to be orange, I might use some opaque, but that that's by no means a certainty. Um, in fact, and I'm going to end the broadcast here, um, The I'm happy to say the painting really, to a large degree, already has, already has the feel Oh, I should, I, here's something over here I should have lifted out. I'll do that. With, I'll do the tape thing and take that out. Anyway, it, it already has, to a large degree, it already has the feel that I want the, the finished piece to have. And um, if I were to try to describe it, it would be hard to describe, but I'll do my best anyway. I am aiming for, I'll say, a charming, <laughs> that's a good word, isn't it? I'm aiming for a charming interplay, interrelationship between realism and abstract or unrealism. And, and, and that's putting the emphasis in the wrong place. The goal is not to be unrealistic. The goal is to have interesting or beautiful abstract things happening uh, and almost by accident. So for instance, let me let me point out some of the things that I really like about this painting that I will, I hope, uh, not lose or destroy. Let me, let me uh, hang on a second. I want to get my uh, Facebook uh, monitor back up and functioning. That was funny. I just lost a viewer, by the way. I mean, just my, my Facebook likes or followers. I just clicked on it, right? It went from whatever number it was, 4,305 to 4,304. <laughs> right, when I, right when I clicked on it. So that's funny. So I just offended somebody. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. More likely, I just bored somebody to tears. Now that, that, may, that may very well be the case. All right, I was going to say... <laughs> And I wish you guys could see this in person because I promise uh, it is prettier in person than it is on any of my monitors. But let me tell you some of the stuff I like. And it's at the most moment, it's mostly color. I love this green. Where did this green come? I haven't got a clue. It's a complete accident. I love the yellow burst there, there, and there. Where did it come from? Probably from the yellow pencil, but I couldn't promise. I love this salmony pink. I love that red. I love th this red. Um, I love the, I love the the pale blue in the windows, uh, in in contrast to the, uh, the everything is warm except for that those blue windows. I actually love, like on this door, the feathery when I when I used the magic eraser and lifted out paint, I also lifted out some of the ink, and at first I was thinking, oh, I'll just come back and redraw that the way I did here. Uh, but then when I look at it through fresh eyes, I go, oh, no, what the heck am I thinking? It's, it's way more charming like this. In fact, I'm not thrilled about what I just did right there, to tell you the truth. I'll probably leave it, but if I don't, I'll get out the magic eraser and erase that. But I I'm, I'm find I'm, I'm actually liking the, the feathery effect. Now, I'm not going to leave it all feathery because then it looks accidental. But I think, I'm thinking out loud here, I'm thinking if I draw some of it with a nice, new, clean, crisp, dark black line, 
and then leave some of it feathery, it will look much more intentional. Right? You don't want your viewer, as, as an artist, to feel like you just messed up. That, isn't, they don't, that does not give the viewer a pleasant feeling. Um, they, they, if you can convince them that every mark is intentional, then they will relax and enjoy your painting. But if they feel like, no, you just screwed up or you just quit because you got tired or anything like that, or you weren't paying attention, then see that leads to a, an uncomfortable gut feeling in, in the viewer. So and there's of course a thousand different ways for to, to either fail to make that happen or to make it happen, either one. Yeah, so I'm actually, again, I'm pretty happy with the way the, the feathery um, the feathery lines are looking. That when it first happened, I thought, oh no, that's a disaster. I'm going to have to clean up. But now that I've looked at it, again, with fresh eyes, I'm going, what, what, what am I thinking? Like, that's gorgeous. In fact, it's one of those things that the, uh, the viewer would have a hard time uh, interpreting how I did How did he do that? How did he get his pen to make such you know, he would, the viewer would say, especially if the viewer were an artist, the viewer would say, man, I can never get my pens to make lines that, that light and, and feathery. So now we know the answer is I erased it <laughs> with the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. How about that? Um... I have one question I have not yet resolved is how much this up here, this is all shingles, like cedar shake shingles, and this down here is bricks. And I do think I want to indicate that in some way, but boy, that's going to have to be really, really, really delicate. You know, one thing I might do, I might go through, ransack my collection of these, of these pens and uh, see if I've got a, 0 0.05, you know, super, super, super fine. But even that's problematic. You have to watch out for that super fine impulse. <laughs> All right, I ramble on. Um, and uh, I'm not sure that Facebook, yeah, I think Facebook is working. Oh, it comes and goes. I'm sorry, y'all. By the way, Facebook friends, um, if you ever do want to watch a better stream, at least till I buy my next better camera, um, the stream on uh, YouTube. So go to YouTube and do a search for Dan the Art Man, and uh, I'm broadcasting at the same time on uh, YouTube, and it's a little bit better, a little bit better stream over there. But for tonight, I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to keep painting for a little. I could grief. It's 10 o'clock. Time does fly when you're having fun, doesn't it? I'm going to uh, quit broadcasting and maybe quit painting. <laughs> I haven't practiced yet today. That would, that would not be a good thing to miss a day of practice. So what the heck? I might tackle this tomorrow morning with fresh eyes. All right. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for watching. Love you. Doug, great to see your name. Hope you're doing well. Bye-bye.